Well, we had so much fun on our last salmon fishing trip. About three days later, we were crazy enough to go do it again. We caught our limit again. We got 12 beautiful sockeye salmon. Some of them were big this time. Some of them were a little bit smaller. We still got a ton of meat. We're gonna do something a little bit different with this batch. Some of it we've already frozen and got in the freezer for us. The rest of it, about seven fish, we're gonna be making candied salmon. This is a process that involves a few different things. First, we're gonna be slicing this salmon up. We're gonna be doing a dry brine on it. Then it's gonna actually turn wet. It's gonna pull moisture out of the fish. We're gonna mix it up, let it sit for another day. Then we're gonna take it out of that. We're gonna air dry it. And then finally, we're gonna smoke it for our finished product, which is gonna be some delicious candied salmon. You can tell we've already have our salmon cleaned. We went through and picked out the pin bones, which is a very tedious process. So these are all bone free, ready to go. It's getting warm out here. It's about 70 degrees today. The flies are starting to show up. So we're gonna get the salmon sliced up. We're probably gonna do about two or three inch sections. We're gonna get in our bucket, we're gonna get the brine on it, and we're gonna get this all on ice. Usually we just can our salmon and freeze it, but since we are so early in the season, we're already catching fish, and we're predicting we're gonna catch more that we can can later on, we thought it'd be cool to try this candied salmon. We're gonna be leaving the skin on, all these fillets, and we did candy salmon last year. We candied pink salmon and chum salmon. This is red salmon, so this is a little better tasting of a salmon in our opinion, so I have a feeling this is gonna turn out extremely good. Slippery. No bones, huh? Nope. It's gonna be delicious. Alrighty, got these all sliced up. I'm gonna run inside and I'm gonna grab all the ingredients that we're gonna need for our dry brine. We have never done a dry brine before. Previously, we've just done a wet brine where it's basically you got sugar and salt and you add some water to it. But we're gonna do it dry this time. We're gonna see how it turns out. I have four cups, almost five cups of brown sugar and about four to five cups of white sugar, two cups of salt. I'm gonna get them all mixed up in here and then we're gonna add them to our fish. We're gonna put half in that one, half in that one and we're gonna make sure the fish is very evenly coated. Get out of here, flies. And at that point, we'll be ready to put these in our ice chest because we need to keep them very cool. And they'll go in the ice chest for 24 hours. Okay, that's what we're kind of looking for. The heavy coating. Both sides. And from what I've read is this is gonna pull a lot of moisture out of the fish. So in 24 hours, there should be a lot of liquid in here. And at that point, we're gonna let it sit for another 24 hours. And after that, we're gonna have to kind of drip dry it off and then it's gonna air dry for a whole nother day. It's been 24 hours since our fish have been in the ice chest in their dry brine. Let's pop it open and see what it looks like in there. Oh yeah, well, tons of liquid. Wow, that's, that's actually pretty crazy. Uh, there, there was no liquid in there. We just added the salt and the sugar and we're gonna give this a mix. Mix it up really nice, make sure it's evenly coated and I'm gonna put a little bit more ice in here and they're gonna stay out here for another 24 hours. It smells sweet. Oh, it's shrunk down a lot. another 24 hours and our salmon fillets are now ready to move on to the next step of our candied salmon process. We're going to bring them inside. Okay, the next 
part of this process is gonna be really simple. We're gonna be air drying the salmon. This is my little rack that we built a while ago for just air drying herbs and things like that. It's just half inch hardware cloth. I got a rag underneath there because the salmon is gonna be dripping and it's really sticky. All we're gonna be doing is taking the pieces of salmon out like this, letting them drip for a second and placing them on the rack. And we're gonna put our little fan on them. We're gonna let them air dry for another 24 hours before we start smoking them. Another thing I wanna mention is the salmon has definitely changed. It's still got the dice color. It's darkened up a little bit. The fillets have shrunken down and they've firmed up quite a bit. All right, that's the last one. We completely filled up our little drying rack. Okay, got our little fan hooked up and this is gonna go for 24 hours. We've actually never air dried salmon when we're smoking it. We smoked a lot of salmon, but we've never air dried it. We're gonna see how this works out and tomorrow we'll be able to throw this on the smoker. But for now, Ariel's gonna jump in here and she's also gonna be making some caviar for us. For our caviar, we're gonna be using some sockeye roe and these eggs came from the reds that Eric processed for our candied salmon. And you can also use other types of salmon. We've used chum and pink salmon. They have much bigger eggs compared to the sockeye, but I really like the way the sockeyes taste. We've only done this a few times, and I think I was kind of making it harder than it needed to be because I figured out a really good solution last time. I'm just gonna show you it. It's fairly quick. It doesn't even take that long. So the eggs have this membrane on the outside. And what I just try to do is just try to get as many eggs as I can off of that membrane, just kind of kind of delicately. But if I get some of the membrane in the bowl, I'm not worried about that either. I've read of lots of different ways to do this. You can use like a little knife. You can even use like a little bit of mesh and kind of rub the eggs through that. Well, I've tried that and for me that just didn't work. Um, I was just, like I said, making it too hard. This has been way easier to do it this way. This next part is going to be the part that takes the longest, but I've got it down pretty quickly. So the trick is to use very, very, very hot water, really, really hot, scalding hot, and that is going to be how we're going to rinse these. So I'm gonna head over to the sink. I'm just kind of using my fingers. I'm just breaking up the, the membrane and the sacs. I'm just kind of just swishing everything around. And our water's getting really hot. And then what I do is I pour the water out, trying not to get too many of the eggs out. And I'm basically just gonna repeat this process. Did that about 10 times, and I'm just gonna do it one more time, drain it out, then I'm gonna be transferring it to our strainer basically going to be rinsing these and getting these ready for our salt brine. Eric dissolved half a cup of kosher salt in three cups of water. That's what we're going to be using for a brine. And you can brine it for a really long time. I think caviar is usually done for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I've seen some recipes that call for longer. We do not like ours that salty at all. So we usually do just a few minutes. And you probably could tell when we were using the hot water on the row, the eggs went cloudy. They're going to get back to that really beautiful color in just a moment when I get them in here. And don't worry if you have some of the membrane left because it's not really a big deal. I usually strain it once more and we get some of that out. We're gonna give this a stir and I think our golden number was four minutes. This is sat for four minutes. We're gonna give it one final rinse and then we'll be ready to put it in some jars. Well, we ended up with just a little bit more than one whole half pint. So we're actually gonna be putting this one in the freezer. That's how we're gonna preserve it. And we're gonna save this for fresh eating. And what I read for preserving it is to just add a little bit of olive oil. I mean, not, not much at all, really. I just give it a light stir with a spoon. We add a lid and it's ready to go in the freezer.
and we're going to pull it out when we run out of our fresh caviar and eat this. So there you go. It's really, really simple. If you can get your hands on fresh eggs, salmon roe, they are awesome to try for this. Okay, good morning. It's been another 24 hours, and I'm not gonna lie, the salmon is looking beautiful. It turned like a candy apple red. It's it's not sticky anymore, it's not wet, it's really firmed up. I mean, you can touch it. Your fingers are completely dry. We're gonna get the smoker loaded up. We're gonna do this in kind of different sections because we have so many pieces that are real small, and then you know we've got some that are real big, so we're gonna kind of section them off because the small ones are gonna have to come off first. And then we're gonna start smoking the meat. Just now, I'll just give them to you by what? Do you want like? Because kind of we're going to medium. Well, this is size. thick. This is yeah, medium. Those size. are still thick. Or medium, whatever. You, whatever you just girthy. Yeah. Okay. Those two are. That one is. Doing good. All right, we're getting the smoker fired up. We're just starting with firewood, just spruce kindling. And then today we're actually gonna be smoking this all with some birch. But before this gets smoking and we get the door closed, we're gonna whip up a little glaze real quick and we're gonna candy the salmon even more. So I'm thinking this is gonna smoke for probably three to four hours. And I'm gonna glaze it like every half an hour or 45 minutes. And to do that, we have one jar of spruce tip syrup that Ariel made last season. And then this is leftover cowboy candy marinade. This was actually about three jars of it and it was a little thin. So I boiled it down and we have a very thick, sticky glaze. We're gonna mix these two together and we're just gonna be basting it on the salmon. Yeah, look how thick that is. Oh gosh, oh gosh look at how thick that is. It's like molasses. Look at that. You need it like, like candy. Candy. There's jalapenos How in How are you going to even get that on? I don't know. I might have to heat it up. I would heat it up. It's just... You turned it into honey. Honey, please. Let's see if I can mix it. Okay, this is way too thick. <laughs> I'm gonna go inside and heat this up. We're gonna do like a double boiler on it. So steam it, get this a little hotter and we're almost ready to throw our birch on there. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna try. Oh my gosh, that's good. Oh, it's spicy. Spicy and sweet. Could you taste the lemon? Oh, did you get hit with the fumes? The smoke got me. Can you taste the lemon at all? Or the spruce? Uh, yeah, it's really good. bad. So is that sunglasses tan? I know. Got it from Nebraska. Oh my gosh, I still got so many more to do. <sighs> Goggles would probably help. Maybe, yeah. Whew, 
That is a sm that is a horror. That is a smoky fire. <laughs> you know what to say about that? I still got to do some more. Whew. Maybe if I stand down here, you know what I mean, like this. No, it doesn't really help. There's just smoke everywhere in there. Okay, we'll check on these in a half an hour and we'll, we'll baste them again. I'm probably gonna do it every half an hour. Really want a real st sticky consistency on them when they're done. All right, we're hour and a half in. We've basted them twice. This is gonna be the third time. Let's see what they're looking like. Get out of there, you little beggar. Good, oh, they're sticky. That's rain. Oh, it's starting to rain. We're trying something a little different this time. Usually, well, pretty much every time we smoke salmon, we always get some of them that stick to the grill. And that's not a problem because we're usually canning it and we don't use the skin anyways. But these ones, we're gonna keep the skin on them. And I want them to look nice. I want them to come off the grill. So what I did was I took my basting brush before we started smoking them and I took some olive oil and I rubbed down the whole grill. So, so far they're not sticking. So we'll see how it works. Well, our friend the sandhill crane has returned and it looks like he found himself a girlfriend so they were just up here checking out the smoker we came outside now they're in the back of the bog looks like they're gonna leave pretty soon the wingspan on these birds is just huge Okay, I think we got probably about an hour and a half left of smoking. I'm gonna do one more really good basting, load up the smoker one more time and we're gonna let them go. And then I'm gonna let the smoker kind of cool off and we'll be able to taste test these. They're looking really good and they smell great. Oh yeah, they're so sticky. Okay, that'll do it. This is just perfect timing. It is starting to rain and our salmon is officially done. How long did it go for? about four and a half hours of good smoking with the birch wood. We're gonna pull the door off and we're gonna try it, see how it is. No, peel them. I wanna eat a small one. Let's eat this one. I'll eat this one. Do they stick? No. Just a tiny bit of stickage, but, but not, not bad, bad at all. Oh my gosh. Well, we're not sharing a piece? No. Let's try this. Ooh. They're definitely done. That's really good. It's really salty and it's got, it's not overly sweet at all. First impressions, it is it is good. We had this last year. I think it's great. This is like a great snack food. You know, bring it out on the go. Have something sweet and some protein, this is good. It's really good. It is not overly salty, like you mentioned, or sweet, surprisingly. It's salty and then like an aftertaste of sweet sweetness the texture is really nice it's like a nice really firm firm hard it's sticky i think it's really good they turned out great i'll grab a piece right here if i want to eat i just want to look at one of these big chunks yeah those are beautiful beautiful piece and spreading the olive oil on the grill yes worked great the only thing it's a little bit sticky is just the sugar that's not bad that's kind of on the grill but these are so easy to pull off there oh these are gonna look beautiful and i was really happy with that birch wood it smoked for a long time. I think it burned a little longer than the alder we usually use. And I think it gave a pretty good flavor. Honestly, yeah. I don't really notice if there was much of a difference in the flavor, so I guess that's good. I think it's time to head inside. Yep, we got a lot of salmon. We got to grab something to bring this all inside. Do you want the last bite? Oh, it's beautiful. Look at it. It's like, look at the gold almost. It's a little bone right there. But it's, uh, 
Do you know what I mean with that? With this sticky, I almost want it to be like sugar, or like more. More sugar. More brown sugar, more Man, like. It's like pure sugar we put on there. Candy. I don't know. I like, like it. I really like it. I think it turned out great. Well, it totally did. And it's not sticking. Oh my gosh, that's freaking beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous stuff. I know. Oh, let me get this one more piece. One more piece. Do you smell that? It smells like salmon. Mm, salty sweetness. You like that? Like that, yeah. I think if there's, I only saw like one or two bones, but um, I think if there's any bones, it's impossible to take them out at this point. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had to put our old food saver out of commission. We had it for about six years. We did many, many wild animals, domestic ones too, that we raised. <laughs> we just did a lot. For years, we used that thing. We worked that thing. On vegetables too. And so he finally took a, he didn't. He took a dump. Yeah, so we have this new guy with us. Yeah, the old one was a food saver. This is an, a food saver also that we bought. And this is like the game saver one. But so far, it's working really good for us. And this, this is a finished product right here. A lot of hard work, a lot of fishing, a lot of processing and smoking of the meat. That's beautiful. What do you think? I said we'd do another one. Very nice. And what we're going to be doing with this is we're vacuum sealing it. And we are going to be keeping this in the freezer until we're ready to eat it. And then at that point, you know, when we want a bag, we'll take it out of the freezer. We'll thaw it out and um, keep it in a cool place or keep it in the fridge until we finish it. This can't really be kept on the counter as is right now. It just hasn't been dried long, enough. dried long enough. And we're pretty sure if you just kept smoking this, maybe double the time, it would probably dry out enough where that would kind of preserve it itself and you wouldn't have to freeze it. I'm not sure about the whole candied salmon, but I know you can, you can salt it and for sure air dry it and smoke it. Yep. And it'll be stable, you ready? All right, I forget how to use this thing. Uh... But we have a lot more to do. Yep, and we're gonna finish these up. We're gonna put them in the freezer and we look forward to opening these up come summertime. It'll be a great snack. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Okay, this one, let's do these ones. Okay, sorry. This is gonna be the good looking one. Or do you think I should wait till I get down to the thick ones? No, these are great. Get them different ones. These would be awesome. That is what it's all about right there. Beauties.